Now that we have a better understanding of why the normal distribution looks the way it does, let's have another look at fitting one to our data. Now we've seen the maximum likelihood estimator for the mean of our distribution already. It's the arithmetic mean. In fact, as we saw in the last video, this estimator was broadly used for thousands of years before Gauss worked out the distribution for which it is a maximum likelihood estimator. For the sake of completeness, let's work out the maximum likelihood estimator for the variance or equivalently for the standard deviation as well. We start by filling in the definition of the probability density, taking the logarithm, separates these two factors into two terms as before, and using what we know about the logarithm, we can separate the term on the left into two more terms, one of which doesn't contain sigma, so can be ignored. The second term, the logarithm of sigma, exists inside a sum over x, so this is simply n times the logarithm over sigma. This is how far we can simplify our objective function, so now it's time to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. The derivative of the logarithm of sigma is 1 over sigma, and the derivative of minus 1 over 2 times sigma squared works out as plus 1 over sigma cubed. In the left-hand side of this expression, we can factor out 1 of the 1 over sigmas, and since we can assume that 1 over sigma is not 0, we see that this expression is 0. And after rearranging a little bit, we find that 1 over sigma squared is equal to n over the sum over r squared errors, and taking the inverse, we find that sigma squared, the variance, is equal to the average value of our squared errors. And if we take the square root on both sides, we get an estimator for the standard deviation instead of the variance. Note that it turns out that this estimator is biased. If we repeatedly sample a data set and compute the variance, our average error in the estimate doesn't actually go to zero. For an unbiased estimator, we need to divide by n minus 1 instead of by n. For large data, the difference has minimal impact. Now sometimes, we may come up against a weighted data set. For instance, we might trust some of our measurements more than others, and so downweight the ones we distrust in order to get a more appropriate model. We'll see some weighted data sets crop up later in this lecture, and also in future lectures. In such cases, we can easily define a weighted maximum likelihood objective. We minimize the log likelihood as before, but we assign each term, that is each instance, a positive weight, and we maximize the weighted sum. For normal distributions, the weighted maximum likelihood estimators are exactly what you'd expect. The same as for the unweighted case, except that the sum becomes a weighted sum, and instead of dividing by the total number of instances n, we divide by the sum of all the weights n omega. We'll skip the derivation for now, but you can work it out yourself by following the steps in the previous slides with these omega weights in place. For the multivariate normal distribution, these are the maximum likelihood estimators. And the same things we said for the univariate case hold here as well. The estimator for the covariance requires a correction if you need unbiased estimates, which consists of dividing by n minus 1 instead of n. And if we have weighted data, we simply modify the estimators by making the sum a weighted sum, and by making the denominator the sum of all the weights instead of the number of instances in our data. Now we first encounter the principle of least squares, not in the context of descriptive statistics like the mean and the standard deviation, but in the context of regression. And you may ask whether this also leads to a normal distribution hiding somewhere in the regression problem. And indeed it does. When we fit a line using the least squares loss, we are implicitly assuming a model with noise. And that noise we are assuming to be normally distributed. For a linear model, it works like this. We assume that our features were generated by some random process, which we don't know the details of. Somehow a random variable x was sampled, and this sample was then transformed by a linear function parameterized by w and b. And to the result of that transformation, a scalar e of normally distributed random noise was added. And e has zero mean with some variance. And again, we don't know the distribution that generated x, and we don't know the variance on the noise distribution, 
But as it turns out, we can estimate W and B without knowing these. Under these assumptions, the values Y in our dataset, conditioned on the values of the features, can be described with a probability distribution. And so maximizing the probability density of the values we saw under that distribution will allow us to fit W and B. We take the logarithm again, and we fill in this probability density function. For each instance i in our data, the probability distribution on the y-axis is given by a mean, which consists of the features fed through our linear model, and some variance. And we want to find the parameters w and b that will maximize this probability density. We simplify as before, and since we're only interested in the mean a lot of the elements of the probability density of the normal distribution disappear, and this is what we're left with. By removing this minus in front, we turn the maximization objective into a minimization objective, and what we are left with is simply the sum of squared errors objective that we've been using already. So finally, let's look at the last of our models from the previous video the Gaussian mixture model. What happens when we try to define the maximum likelihood objective for this model? Writing it down is very simple. We have three sets of parameters, the weights w, the means mu, and the covariance matrices sigma. And what we want to maximize is the sum of the logarithm of the probability densities. The problem that we face is that the probability density is defined as a sum. So we get a sum inside of a logarithm. We cannot work the sum out of the logarithm, which means we don't get a nice formulation of the derivative. We can do it anyway, be satisfied with an ugly function, and solve it by gradient descent. We can even use backpropagation so we only have to work out the local derivatives. But what we'll never get is a functional form for the derivative that we can set equal to zero and solve analytically. In the next video, we'll discuss the expectation maximization algorithm. This doesn't give us an analytical solution, but it does allow us to use the tricks we've seen in this video to help us fit a model.